Hello, everyone. Welcome to my video tutorial for single cell RNA and DNA data analysis. Today, I'm going to show you how to perform trajectory analysis for single cell ATAC seq data. For the analysis, we need a package C0 and the molecule 3. We can have a look at the online tutorial for Cicero. So Cicero was a package developed to analyze the single cell ataxic data for constructing and analyzing cis regulatory network. Cicero also extended the package monocle 3 to allow identify differential accessibility cell clustering, visualization, and trajectory analysis. So for today's analysis, we can divide to eight steps. The first step is to load the data, then data pre-processing. The third step is to reduce the dimensionality using UMAP. After that, we can cluster the cells. For trajectory analysis, we use the function, then the graph, then order the cells, then we can plot the UMAP in pseudo time. So after that, we can perform other analysis, but today I'm not going to in details for the last step. So we can load the package C0 and the monarch 3 also we set the random seed. So you can follow the online tutorial to install C0. You can see here is the instruction for install the package. The next step is to load the data. Because C0 extended the package to uh, molecule 3, so we will be using the CDS data object. So the difference we know already for the ATAC seq data, the features for the data are peaks. For today's demonstration, I'm going to use two set of data to show you how to load the data into R. First, I'm going to show you how to load the data from the 10 times genomics platform. So here are the code to load the data set. So I'm going to use the 5K PBMC data set as an example for the demonstration. So you can download the 5K uh, ATAC-seq data from the 10 times genomic website. If you scroll down, you can see uh, the files you need to download are in the peak by cell matrix. If you download it, there are three files inside. And I downloaded already, you can have a look. So one file is the barcode, the other one is the matrix data, and the third one is the pixbat. So now we can load the data into R. First, we can use the read mm function from the matrix package to read the matrix data into R. And we name it as in data. I'm using the same code from the online tutorial. Okay, so you can see we have the in data in the data window and uh, it is the uh, large DGT matrix data. And we can have a look at the data. You can see it's a large DGT matrix data. Uh, for the rows, it was uh, named by the number and uh, we don't have column names. So here are the counts for the matrix data. You can see a dot, that means count is uh, zero, and also you can see other count, two, four, one. Because the open chromatin region in a cell should be just one. 
So for the analysis, we need to change any count into one. So let's change the count. Let's have a so you can see now we change the count into one for each peak in each cell. So next we can read the barcode in as the cell information. So we can click the cell information to see the barcode. You can see the rows are named by the numbers and the, the cell barcode are in the column named as V1. So we need to make some changes for the barcode. First, we need to change the row names, uh, the, the barcode names. We know the cells name are in the V1 column. So we can just name the row names from the information in V1 column. Let's have a look again. You can see now the row names are the barcodes. And also we name the first column as the cells. So we change the name from V1 to cells. We can have a look again. You can see now the name for the column is the cells. So next we can read the peak information from the PixBad file. We can connect the peak information data frame again. You can see the row names are named by the numbers. We have three columns. Column one is the V1, and then they are the chromosome information. Column two, V2, is the start site for the peak, and the column three, V3, is the end site for the peaks. We need to make some changes again for the peaks information. So first we can change the column name. V1 we named as the chromosome. The start position as BP1 and the end position as BP2. So let's change the column name. We can have a look at the peak information. You can see we change the column name, chromosome information, BP1 at the start side and the BP2 at the end side. So for the peak information, we want the peak's name in the row name. So we need to change it again. First, we can create a new column named as the site name. Then we use the paste function for each peak to join the chromosome start position and end position together and separate by the hyphen. So let's do this. We can have a look at the peak information again. You can see now we created a column named as the site name. Then we have the peak information. Then we have the peak information for all the peaks in the data set. Because we want the peaks became the row names, so we need to change the row names as the uh, peak's name. We just use the uh, information from the column site names, name it as the row names. So let's run the function. We can have a look again. You can see now the row names are the peaks. So now we have a correct files for the peaks information and the cell information. And I showed you for the matrix data, the row names are in numbers and we don't have the cell barcode for the column names. So we can modify the matrix data using barcode information from the barcode file and the peaks information from the peak information file. So let's modify the matrix data. We know the row names for the peaks information file are peaks. Then we can get the peaks row names for the matrix data row names. And also we can get the barcode information from the cell information file to name the columns name for the cells in the matrix data. So now we can have a look at the matrix data again. So you can see in the matrix data, the row names are cell barcode and the column names are the 
peaks. So we created the correct data for the metrics data and then we modified the cell information file as the cell metadata and the peak information as the gene metadata. Now we can use the function in molecule 3 to create a CDS data set using three files in data, G information and the cell information. So let's create the CDS data. So you can see in the data window, we have a CDS object named as the input CDS. It is a large cell data set. So now we can use the detect gene function in molecule 3 package to detect all the genes that uh, has the expression above the threshold. And also want to make sure there are no peaks included with the zero rates in the CDS object. So now the data is ready for pre-processing then uh, perform the dimensional reduction cell clustering. After that we can perform the trajectory analysis. But I'm not going to use this data set for trajectory analysis because it's not a good example to show the trajectories. For this part I just want to show you how to load the data from 10 times genomics platform if you have the data to analysis. So for the trajectory analysis, I'm going to use the data set from the online tutorial. So you can download the data. This is provided for the online tutorial. I downloaded what I did. We can just read the data in. So before we do this, we can clear those data. We don't need it anymore. So let's read the kidney data in. So it is in a text file. Using the kidney data set as an example, you can learn how to load the data from text files. So let's read the data in. Then we can click the data to have a look what kind of information in the data set. You can see here the row names are the numbers and we have three columns. The first column is the peak names. The second column are the cell barcode and the third column is the count. You can see the count for each peak is one. So now we can use the function from the C0 to make a, a ATAC CDS object. Once again, we named it as the input CDS. You can see in the data window, we created a large cell data set. So we loaded the data. So the second step is to pre-process and normalize the data using the normalization method latent semantic indexing (LSI). So this is the recommended normalization method for ATAC seq data. So first we can use the estimate size factors function to process the data and select an optional baseline for this sample. Then next we can normalize the data use the method LSI. So we know uh, ATAX data has a large amount of peaks. So this process takes time for processing and uh, data normalization. After data normalization, we can go to the third step, run U map to reduce the dimension. And the reduction method will be the U map. And also we know the pre-process method is LSI. So let's run the third step.
after you map, we can connect the cells. Now we are ready to see the cell clusters use the plot cells function from the molecule 3. So you can see we got five cell clusters in this kidney data set. Now we are ready to do the trajectory analysis. This is the this is the fifth step for the analysis, but it is the first step for the trajectory analysis. So let's run the function learn graph. Then we can order the cells in pseudo time and we open uh, the shiny app. According to the online tutorial, the start point is here. So we can just choose the start point and then click done. Then we can go back to R and plot the cells by pseudo time. So you can see we have a new map plot to show the trajectory of the cells start from um, position number one. Now we have one, two, three, four branch point and the cell clusters in two, three, four, five are derived from progenitor cells from here. So we finish the trajectory analysis. You can see it is pretty easy to do the analysis for ATAC seq data. Once again, I want to see if you can read your data in correctly, you can just follow the simple steps to do the analysis. It is a straightforward process. So after the trajectory analysis, you can do lots of other analysis. I'm not going to show you here today. For other analysis, it is really depends on your data set and what kind of biological question you are asking. For example, we can visualize accessibility across pseudo time for the peaks. So let's run this code and the plot accessibility in pseudo time for three peaks. Let's zoom in to look at the accessibility in pseudo time for the peaks. You can see the pseudo time from 0 to 20. And the percentage of cell accessible for the peak 1 and the peak 2, they are in the later stage of cell differentiation. And for peak 3, it is in the middle stage of cell differentiation. So I'm going to stop from here. You can follow the online tutorial to do more analysis. As I said, load the correct data into R is important. Here I showed you how to load the data from 10 times genomics platform and also know the text file data set for kidney single cell ATAC seq data. I'm going to stop my demonstration today. I hope my video tutorial can help your data analysis. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel, share my videos with your friends. Thank you and I hope to see you in my next video.